I'm not sure if some of you are aware, but there's been a, for some odd reason, maybe it's a, as a consequence or a reaction towards COVID and, you know, the lockdowns in certain states and whatever, maybe, but there's been an uptick um, in kind of cases regarding Asian hate crimes in North America. Various people from various places across Far East Asia have been getting attacked all over North America, Asians Americans for the most part, um, varying numbers of ages from old to the young, some with very life threatening, you know, obviously injuries. And it's been pretty hard to watch, right, to kind of see all these stories popping up all over the place. Because I do remember at the beginning of COVID, when it first started to, you know, spread across parts of Europe, there were some people that were suggesting or saying that um, a lot of the sort of, you know, Asian cuisine would suffer because people would have a, a natural sort of um, aversion to push back from being around people that were from the country where the virus originated, um, which is, of course, was a, a troubling thing to even kind of ponder or think about. But those are conversations that are being had. But it kind of, it, it felt like it started and ended there. And then obviously over time, as things transpired and people were just hungry, they you know what effort i'm gonna take the calculator it's gonna go anyway so now you don't really see people doing a quote-unquote quasi boycott but i do remember especially when i used to walk past some of the uh more popular um takeaways um asian takeaways we have here in my area they were you, they were kind of barren now a lot of it you could say during lockdown but most of the other places chicken wing places and pizza places were still full so there was obviously a, a clear reaction um, to kind of push away and not go to these kind of establishments. But again, over time, people wised up, a bit more sensible, decided to go back. And that's where I thought it would end. But it's gone further now, especially in North America. People are, are actually assaulting yeah, people from the Asian community. And this is one of the stories. It's from CBNS, CB, CB. SN. It's a suspect arrested in Oakland robbery assault that left a 75 year old Asian American man brain dead, right? And it says um, police were announced um, on arrest on Tuesday in an assault and robbery that critically injured a 75 year old Asian American man. An official in Oakland's Chinatown community told CBS San Francisco the victim was brain dead from the critical injuries he suffered in the attack. Authorities have been trying to address the attacks of older Asian uh, um, citizens in San Francisco, Oakland, and elsewhere in the two week span in february authorities have recorded 18 crimes against asian americans around oakland chinatown according to the Al the almeida county district attorney nancy o'malley she has launched a special unit within her department to investigate these attacks right and of course there's those videos popping up that you might have seen on world star of people you know pushing um you know very frail asian looking people on the floor and stuff leaving them with really horrible injuries so there's clearly something happening there in america again i'm not i don't live there i'm not sure what's happening but clearly something happening or occurring so it was really interesting to see the approach and the sort of fallout that occurred when this story came on the news, well, this came when this story spread across social media regarding a journalist, um, or sorry, a teen vote editor called Alexi McC McCammond, McCammond, yeah, Alexi McCammond, who um, was recently announced as one of the editors of Teen Vogue. She got a promotion from working from Axios, which is a really odd one, to be fair. Axios is, has just about as much to do with fashion as flipping shell, but hey, what can you do? She um, recently got this uh, promotion, maybe because Teen Vogue has gone more on a political layer, I don't know, but regardless, she got a promotion, and then um, as it would be had, somebody decided to dig into her history, found some tweets that were very insulting or derogatory towards the Asian community. And some actual genuine questions were put up to fashion because for fashion, during this whole, you know, outbreak of violence in North America, certain brands and people in the industry were pushing around this hashtag of stop Asian hate. Um, which is all fair and good, isn't it? These sort of political activism stuff that people do on social media. It's good to get people's attention on certain things, brings more eyes, maybe kind of, you know, mobilizes certain groups, maybe gets attention of people in government. But for the most part, they're fairly... Uh, they're fairly ineffective in their approach. They don't really change much. It's probably a way more so for you to kind of uh, put out and show out your political leanings and where you basically stand on some societal issues. But in terms of actually enacting change on the ground in real life that actually affects people, they're pretty ineffective. But the interesting part of it, especially when it comes to fashion, these kind of places where I feel like they try to use these hashtags as a way to kind of uh, distract and put the attention away from whatever issues are actually happening in the industry day to day, it's interesting when they have an issue like this concerning a, a group of people who are very much, I would assume, the bedrock and maybe one of the biggest customers when it comes to buying of fashion in North America, which happens to be the Asian community. If you really want to stop Asian hate, you couldn't, with good conscience, decide to go through with hiring and keeping this Alexi McMahon on your Teen Vogue editorial board. 
I don't agree with it personally. I don't think she should lose her job. I think she sent those tweets out when she was 16 or something. She apologised for them at the time that she got... She apologised for them at the time because I think her boyfriend, if I remember correctly... If, if I remember correctly, her boyfriend or whoever she's with at the moment, her partner, was somebody that was associated with the Joe Biden campaign or Bernie Sanders or one of them. He said something very insulting or he made a threat towards another journalist that got leaked. And then, of course, when that got leaked, more attention got brought to the couple. They found her tweets and she apologised then. So she's apologised already for these tweets. So you did something at 16, you apologize already two years ago or whatever it was, you, d you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be unemployable because you made a mistake back then. It should be up to the employer to decide whether or not they want to take the risk on you. If they want to take the risk on you, cool, fair enough. But again, if you keep pushing out the hashtag stop Asian hate, it doesn't make any sense why you keep this woman on your board. But the funny thing is, again, when you get into word identity politics things, the issue that it kind of raises is that when you play identity politics games, it inevitably will come and bite you in the bum. Because one of the reasons why I think they haven't fired her is because she's black or of some mixed heritage. If she was a white lady, a white man, it would be far easier to let him go or let him or her go. But because she already comes from a, a group of people who aren't equally or adequately represented within the fashion industry, point blank, fashion, whatever you want to call Team Vogue, it's not fashion, whatever, right? In that sp space, because they're not represented point blank, they probably made her higher, a bigger deal than where it should be based on her skin, right? Predominantly, I'd assume. Based on her gender, I would assume. And now those very same things that they base her hiring decision on is now being used against her. Because if you think about it, how else could somebody from Axios get a position at Team Vogue? It makes no sense, right? This is exactly what I said. It's like me working for fucking Shell and getting a job at Days and Confused. Doesn't make any sense. So these work politics or to work politics, these identity politics games that they play inevitably come and bite them on the bum because when it actually comes to enacting and showing exactly where you stand, by making a stand and say, hey, we don't stand for it. Even if you did it in college, we don't care. We're making a stand. We're firing you. And then we're going to hire that Asian lady over there, right? Something like that. But it's a bit performative. But in terms of actually showing that you're actually supporting and you're an ally to the Asian community, that's what you actually do. But they don't because guess what? Identity politics and they don't really give a shit. That's the crux of it. So it's an article here from the BBC. It says, t -Bird editor Alexi McCannon, McCammon sorry, apologizes for anti-Asian tweets. Um, the newly appointed editor of Teen Vogue has apologised for racist and homophobic tweets um, she wrote in 2011. Staff at the magazine signed a letter in protest of hiring Alexi McCammon, now 27, over the comments. The letter said it rejected her sentiments at this moment of historically high anti-Asian violence. It says, I quote, I'm sorry to have such uh, used such hurtful and inexcusable language, McCammon said and tweeted on Monday. I've apologised for my past racist and homophobic tweets and will reiterate that there is no excuse for perpetual in those awful stereotypes in any way she added a series of attacks of asian americans have been reported in recent weeks with as many people saying that they fear further violence mccammon has now made headlines the last month with her partner oh yeah that's what i said uh, tj duckhole resigned from the white house communications team after threatening a journalist he said quote i will destroy you duckhole said in a reporter when she tried to investigate a couple's relationship before it was public uh, mccammon apologized for her tweets in 2019 calling them deeply insensitive but from her, uh, but after her appointment at team vogue last week the the post uh, resurfaced leading to backlash. They were published on Instagram Monday by a journalist called Diane Xu. Right? Xu or Xu? Outdone by Asian American hashtag what's new read McCammon's earlier tweets. Let's actually go to the tweets themselves. I think it's here. So this is from Diet Prada. It says, let's talk about Condé Nast um, HR and this questionable hire for Team Vogue Editor-in-Chief. Uh, so let's go through the slideshow. It says, she had a series of racist tweets 2011. Maybe we can give her some benefit of doubt as these were done when she was still a student. But her apology, which was only after people caught them in 2019, referred to them as deeply insensitive. They are not insensitive. They are racist. Um, there's the tweets itself. She says here, give me two out of ten on my chem problem. Um, cross out all our work and don't explain what I did wrong thanks a lot stupid asian ta you're great the next one says now you're googling how not to wake up with swollen asian eyes and the other one outdone by asians hashtag wash new um it says here when we talk um when we talk about accountability versus cancel culture we need to talk about how this should be addressed uh not just by her but team Vogue and Condé Nast as a whole especially in light of the current national discourse on asian racism team Vogue has positioned itself as a champion of inclusive inclusion uh empowerment is this truly a leader or who has embodied those beliefs would a leader prepare 
preemptively acknowledge the hurt caused by the past or the future plan of action or will the leader just ignore it and hope no one does a Google search? Uh, time and time and time again, this shows that the gatekeepers pay lip service to the diversity. They don't believe that anti-racism policies can and should include Asian Americans. And that's the whole point of it. Unfortunately, they don't believe in these policies whatsoever across the board. They don't care. There was a really great article that went out recently on New York Times investigating digging deep into some of the brands that put out the black squares and were talking very in glowing terms about the Black Lives, black lives Matter movement and sort of following up with some of the promises that they laid out or maybe some of the things that they were kind of suggesting. And for the most part, everyone sort of fell the mark. No one's really followed up on what they were doing. They all paid lip service for it because it was a trendy thing to do at the time. And then they went back to reg regular scheduled programming. And that's the unfortunate nature of the fashion industry. Now, I'm a big believer in taking personal accountability or personal responsibility for the brands and places that you invest your money and dollar into. So if it was up to me and I was part of the Asian community, I would be, you know, protesting or boycotting TV Vogue flat out. They didn't even make a physical magazine, I don't think anymore. I'm pretty sure the magazine doesn't exist, but regardless, anything anything consider anything that concerns Vogue or concerns Condé Nast, I'd be completely boycotting until they put together any sort of uh, until they put together an action plan or something or roadmap as to how they end they try how, how they intend to mend the relationship within my community but i will make sure that i make a stand i wouldn't invest any more money in them any advertising dollars anyone that i'm dressing wouldn't wear anything that came through them whatever i'll be doing whatever i can i'll be voting with my feet voting my wallet not to do it but unfortunately in the fashion industry because of the as much as people like to complain about the industry and like to whine and bitch about it people actually love the institution itself they just want to exist in it all they want for some reason for some people i think they just want to replace whoever's in the chairs now with people that look like them but they don't actually want to change it for the better they just want to be in there themselves because they feel left out so because of that they don't really want to upset the ap apple cart too much because again i think the biggest change to do we see happen with dolce gabbana right you see how kind of how uh, you know stefano and flip whatever his other name is um had to kiss the ring when it came to what they said concerning the asian community right boycotted it hurt their sales now they're going so far as to suing diet prada and stuff you can make it hurt for these people where it actually hurts in their pocket but people are not willing to do it why because it's going to affect you it's going to damage maybe some of your connections might burn some bridges might kind of hinder some of your future employment uh, pot potential because you know the industry for as annoying as it is is very much based on relationships and who you know the moment you get your foot in the door you're kind of secured in your position you can kind of bounce around from house to house intern to intern job to job it's pretty much an insular sort of community in that respect so it can work for you and against you but because of that people are scared of the um repercussions that might come their way if they speak up or make a stand regarding this sort issues so it should be no surprise that she's been able to kind of i guess get away with it now again getting away with it if you said something when you're 16 saying it now is not really getting away with it but there maybe is a, a, a question needs to be asked about what is it with americans and saying madly racist stuff when you're younger in the uk we do have i guess at that especially if you think back then whenever that was right when she was younger it might have been 2012 2013 there was an era when Twitter was a bit more lawless. People were basically firing off the hip with some crazy shit. Cool, no problem. But it does seem to be a thing, specifically in America, where there's always some sort of racist past, some sort of, you know, some insult, something that kind of is... Uh, lend itself to the lend itself to the racist discord. I don't know why that is. Why does everyone have some sort of N word thing in their history or something? It's such a bizarre thing to have in your locker. It really, really is. 